features of SD Card Manager. Um, we looked at SD Card Explorer, for example, project, and our tools. Um, so that's that's the majority of the SD Card suite. Um, and again, this is where I pulled up SD Card Manager, Explorer, our data table editor, and also our tools for formatting. There is one more thing I wanted to cover. Uh, I believe we have enough time. We'll look at one other powerful option of the SD card. Um, we've just looked at the data logging options that we have, but with the SD card you also have the option to create clone files or application files. And what these allow you to do is you can create a project file and you can just you know, send in the mail your customer an SD card so they can have their controller that's out in the field they can take that SD card, go out into the field, pop it into the controller, and update their program or download the, the application initially. Anything you want, really. But what's powerful is that it allows you to download a Visiologic project file to the controller without using a computer at all. All you need to do is insert the SD card into the PLC, and you can update a project on the controller without using a PC at all. Uh, it just installs it directly from the SD card. So there's three different ways that you can do that. Um, the first, the original method that you would be able to do that is from information mode. Um, I can't show you that on remote access. Information mode isn't supported uh, in online test mode here. But I could just tell you, if you go into information mode, um, you enter your default password on your PC, on your PLC. To get into information mode, you hold down the touch screen for four seconds. It'll ask you for a password. The default is 1111. Uh, and then you'll see there's a SD menu that you have options available for. And there you can select to, to clone and download it to the SD card or upload it to the PLC. So that's, that's one option which is built into every controller um, is information mode, which allows you to create and, uh, create and download the, the clone file directly from information mode. Uh, another option which was recently added is the ability to do that from the ladder code. Um, so if you want to, when you're initially creating your project, if you want to program in a special HMI section, a, like a, a settings or a maintenance menu, for example, in your software, a separate HMI that's dedicated to the cloning, you can program that in. And we'll see under the SD menu, it's just the clone option. So you have the option to clone to the SD card or from the SD card, whether you want to create the clone file or actually download the, the project, the clone file. To the controller, you would just select that. Also, whether you're just doing the data tables, just the firmware, uh, full cloning operands. Uh, so we won't go through this right now in detail, but that is an option to be able to select the clone file either from information mode. More le recently, you can add it from the ladder and program in your, your application to have a, a nicely designed HMI section and use the clone from the ladder tools. And another easier option, which I can actually show you, um, is under the project menu, and then create project files. This allows you to create the clone or the application files directly from VisiLogic. So you have your project open, your VLP. You can create the clone file directly from, from VisiLogic. Um, now, I have been mentioning a clone file or an application file. There's two main different ones that you'd want to use. Um, it, it shows you here if you read the screen, but uh, the clone file, it's a .c57 or .c350, .c130, depending on which controller you have. But the main difference is that the clone file, uh, it actually includes, it includes the firmware, so you can include the latest operating system in that clone file. Um, also, data table values, if you create it from the controller in information mode, you can copy all the operand values, so the current status of the operands in your controllers, you can copy those current status of the operands, and those will also be transferred to the, the secondary PLC that you install it in. Um, so mainly the clone file just includes the, the extra options, data tables, flash, uh, flash operating system, um, and also operand values if you have those as well. And those are created in the, the .c57, for example, file. The other option you have is a solely a project file. Um, and when you make just the project file, it its extension is a .v57 or .v35, um, and that really just includes the VisiLogic project file. So that would be essentially if you were just doing a, under the connection menu and a standard download, if you use a project file only, it would just be doing a standard download. 
uh, no other firmware or data tables operands included. So the clone gives you a little bit more flexibility, but if you just want to download a standard uh, project file, just the application, then you'd want to use the, the v57 file. Now, if you create either of these files from information mode, um, it automatically places these files that you create in the correct folder. If you do it from, from VisiLogic here, um, you're going to create the file. You can see here, I'll make a, a VisiLogic project file. I hit create. It's going to ask where I want to save it. I'll just put it on my desktop. Again, make sure you don't give it a file name that's longer than eight characters. I call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just to be safe. Save it. It's going to go through. It's going to build and compile your application. And then it doesn't actually tell you when it's done, but it has just created the file. Or I guess it closes out to tell you that it's done. Um, but now, if I go to my desktop, you can see I've created this .v57 file now. Um, so we'll go back to VisiLogic. But the, the .v57 file, um, that is placed in a, a separate file location than the clone files. So when you create the files manually from VisiLogic here, you have to make sure you go and when you're using a clone file, that has to be placed in the system folder. So if you create a clone file from VisiLogic, make sure you copy and paste that .c57 file that you just created and place that in the system folder. If you are creating a project file, as we just did, the .v57, for example, that type of file extension needs to be placed in the, the user app folder. So the .v extension goes into the user app, and the .c extension goes into the system folder. Um, and again, if you create the files from VisiLogic, you place them on the SD card, your customer can go take that SD card out into the field, and then if you haven't pre-programmed a section of your HMI, they can always just go into information mode and be able to, to retain that, that file that you just created on the SD card. Um, so again, you can do it from, from VisiLogic here. You can also do it from information mode of the controller. You can create the clone file as well from information mode of the controller, not just read it back. But one other thing I guess I forgot to mention is when you're creating the clone file from VisiLogic, or I'm sorry, if you're creating the clone file from information mode, you do have to make sure that you include an SD password in the in some point in your application. Um, so that's just found under the the SD menu and set password. So what this is saying is if you want to be able to pull the information off your controller and write it to a clone file on the SD card out in the field, you have to essentially enter in a, a password that you've defined before it lets you pull the information off of the controller. And really what this is doing is just an additional layer of security so that not just anyone can walk up with an SD card, clone your project, and then take it back and install it in a different PLC. So the password really just just adds a second layer of security. And it is a requirement. You can't leave it out. Um, if you try to upload a project that doesn't have an SD password included, you'll see you'll get a little red error message from information mode that tells you password's missing. So that is one requirement to make sure that you include an SD password. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea just to put it in any, any project, um, just so you know. But mainly its use is if you want to be able to to clone the, the project from the controller, from information mode, you do have to include an SD password if you want to be able to go ahead and do that. And that's, that's really all the information that I have to go through today. It's been about an hour or so. Um, Yeah, one other, one other function block that we do have as well. Um, there's the function block to SD safely remove. So when you create this function block, um, you define you know, a double word register for a status, and then also a bit. So this you can monitor this bit to make sure that it's, it's safe to remove the SD card before you pop it out. So that's, that's another good thing to include in your project is to just make sure you, you can um, Make sure you don't lose any data, essentially. Make sure that it's safe to remove it before you eject it from the PLC. Um, but like I said, that's that's all the information that I have right now to present to you. So I'd like to thank you for, for attending. Um, 
I will leave the, the webinar open here, so if you have any other questions, uh, you can keep you know, typing them away, and we'll be here and answering them. Um, but that's, that's really it for the presentation right now. Uh, I should also mention, too, that we've, we've been trying to put these webinars together in a series, and uh, they're all going to be recorded as well. So they are available right now. If you go to our website and then the Support tab, and then you can click the webinars, and you'll be able to view the recording and also all the project files associated. And we also have them in a, a separate section of our website as well. If you go to our forum, uh, forum.unitronics.com, you will also see that we have the, the webinars on there as well. Um, I'll try to go there, but my computer is being a little bogged down right now. Or we can just take you to, I'll show you both places. If you go to our support tab, the webinars are also under webinars here. You can see, I guess we only have three up here in this section. Um, but under the support tab and then forum, this will bring you to our, our newly launched forum from the summer. And usually you'll see them pop up as the first thing. We've been having them as the featured webinars, um, a featured section of the forum. But if you go to blogs on the top here, you can see, again, all the blogs will be listed. And they're being posted as blogs right now. If you go to webinars collection, that's, that's where it'll show you everything that we have posted as far as the webinar series. And I'll just click one here. And you can see this is where it opens up with the, the recorded videos that we have. So all these webinars have been recorded. They're being hosted on YouTube right now. And you can see my internet's a little slow, so it's taking a second or so to load it. Um, but there's, they're separated into easy chunks to digest, uh, usually about five or so videos. Question and answers are posted, as well as the attached files. So again, the file that we did today, that SD card demo, will also be posted on here as well, so you can go back and, and reference that if you want to go over it in more detail. Uh, but other than that, I'd like to thank you for attending. Um, and also, if you have any, any suggestions for future topics or comments on what we did today, um, comments on webinars in general, you can always feel free to send those uh, suggestions or comments to support at unitronics.com. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be reading that there so we can you know, have a little bit of feedback. It would be appreciated so we know what to cover more topics in the future, and if we should be doing anything differently to, to better help you. Uh, but otherwise, thank you, and goodbye.